When you load an existing save, you can use this map options button to toggle natural disasters, unlock all, unlimited money, and tutorials. But there are certain restrictions on unlock all and unlimited money. If you started your save originally with all of these options turned off, you can load a save and turn all or any of the three on. If you started your save originally with unlock all and unlimited money on, you cannot turn them off while loading the save. This is true for these two independently, toggling unlock all depends on its original setting and toggling unlimited money depends on its original setting. Natural disasters can be toggled when loading a save regardless of if it was on or off when you first made that save. Once you have saved a save file, you cannot change the main theme of it or its left or right hand traffic. It's easy to speed through choosing a map to play on, but pay extra attention to the climate and latitude. A lot of the maps that are natively North American theme are actually in the Southern Hemisphere, so the season will be backwards to what we are used to up here, summer in February and winter in July. The climate will tell you how long your winters are and how much rain to expect. The colder the lower end of the temperature range, the longer you can expect to have snow on your map. The outside connections are handy to know, but don't forget, you can make your own outside connections for roads, trains, boats, electricity, and water as soon as you unlock tiles to the edge of the map. Wind conditions don't change over time. Be sure to look at your air pollution info view before you build pollutive industry and maybe before you start planning your city at all. Also, don't forget to look at your inland water reservoirs when you're planning your city. Livestock and stone specialized industries don't require natural resources, even though the resource info view is open when you're placing them. Don't waste precious resource space with these two industry types. Zoning generally prefers the first road placed when deciding which road to attach to. You can use this to your advantage when laying out your roads. You can also also choose to just lay out roads however you like and force the zoning with the in-game paths like this. You can delete the paths once the buildings have zoned in without interrupting the buildings. You can adjust these zoning square gaps a bit by double clicking different spots on your existing road with the draw road tool selected. Most of the time it will move the gap to where you do the double click. It takes a bit of trial and error and finessing but it may be useful. If you're struggling to get different size roads to connect to each other where you want them to, for example, having a smaller road start in the middle of a larger road, turning off the snap to zoning cell length option helps accomplish it. Turning off all snapping and using the replace tool with the same road selected acts as a tool to nudge roads a bit from their original position without deleting and redrawing them. You can select more than one segment at a time with this as well. You can also scooch buildings with this. If you turn snapping off, you can move most ploppable buildings away from the road a bit as long as you no longer see the road required pop-up. If you're like me and very new to interchanges, don't hesitate to use the options provided in game. But if you want to try to make your own, the simplest way to get started is upgrading one segment of existing highway in each direction to have one more lane than before. Then take the one lane, one way highway and build onto and off of that to create your own on and off ramps. If you're using the parallel road tool with with the suspension bridges in the highway menu, the default offset of one is too small and causes the pillars to collide. Up your offset to at least two and you'll be able to draw these bridges no problem. Is your cursor stuck inside your game while you're trying desperately to move it to your second monitor to click on the like button for this video? That's an option in the graphics settings. Change game cursor mode to free and give the video a thumbs up. Full tutorial on key walls to come, but for now a simple way to make them happen with roads is set your elevation to 2.5 meters. Remember the elevation step amount can be toggled and build your road a bit further inland then landscape down to it. You'll get better with practice and we'll have step-by-step -step tutorials out there soon enough for specific use cases. Using the cut option for roads is a very simple way of creating an overpass. Dropping into the ground with the default elevation step at minus 10 meters then drawing a road at zero meters over it is very easy to do. There are different trees available depending on if you have the European or North American theme selected. Don't miss out on your tree of choice. When right clicking with the place multiple trees option, this snapping tool turned on means it will only remove trees of the type you have selected. Unselect this tool and set your brush strength to 100% to remove all the trees from an area as quickly as possible, though you'll likely still have to mouse back and forth a bit. 
You have to buy tiles to the edge of the map to be able to import or export water, while doing so with electricity is available right away because the hydro line is brought to the starting tile. While you may already know that the page up and down keys change the elevation of networks like roads and power lines, on PC, the page up and page down buttons are default for changing your views between above and below ground as well. This works when you're just viewing the city as well as when you're bulldozing something. If you have plenty of low density residential demand, have zoned some, but it's not growing in, check the zoning info view. If the road you've zoned on is red, people don't want to live there in the density you have selected. Speaking of the zoning info view, you can toggle it off by pressing this I in the top left corner or with the default hotkey I on your keyboard. At this time, there is no permanent toggle for it though, so you will have to press I again as you switch between zoning tabs. You can generally get through the game without loans entirely. Their interest rates are quite high and get higher as you take out more. So if you do take a loan, try to pay it back as soon as you can. This said, remember, there's no absolutely correct way to play games like this and if you want to take a loan out to plunk a thing down don't let some nosy youtuber tell you that you're playing the game wrong okay especially if you're coming from the first city skylines game don't hesitate to tax people more than our old comfort zone of 12 percent taxes in city skylines 2 tie into a bunch of different game mechanics like land value rent and demand so there are times to make them much higher or lower than what you may expect is standard if you find yourself wishing for a few more map tiles or development points to make progress on your next project, you can cheese a milestone or two by placing buildings that grant you a big chunk of XP, then bulldozing them. You get 75% of your money back if you bulldoze a building immediately. And hey, if you want to play the game without cheesing milestones like this, don't let pushy YouTubers tell you you're doing it wrong, all right? Transit depots only have so many vehicles that are available for use across all the lines you create. If you see this pop-up, it means the total number of vehicles you have requested across your lines is more than the depot holds, and you need to either add another depot or upgrade the existing one. Changing between the transit vehicle models can also cause this pop-up, as the old vehicles need to come back to the depot and the new ones need to be sent out. Don't stress when you change the models and let the game run a bit before mathing out your vehicle numbers. To bring citizens and cargo to your city from outside connections, you have to draw a path from the transit building to the outside connection and back. This applies to trains, boats, planes, and buses. Citywide policies are tucked away in this city information menu that you get to by clicking the button beside the demand bars. District policies are easier to find in the pop-up when you click the district name. District info views are one of a combined three that I like to use when working out what to zone outside of residential. The population info view tells you you your overall unemployment percentage, which in a perfect world, I would like to keep closer to 0%. The workplace availability info view shows you which education levels you have jobs available or not available for, which helps you choose between industry for lower education and office for higher education, for example. And the district info view shows you the employment situation within that district compared to the number of residents, which you can work on balancing if you want people to to be able to work closer to home. If you're struggling to get any high density residential demand after unlocking the big town milestone, make sure you have at least a college or university, if not both, and set your taxes generally somewhere above 15%, but gradually lower for the higher educations. It takes time, but this will attract students to the city or encourage your existing citizens to go to school, which means they will want smaller spaces to live in as smaller living space generally means more affordable. The production tab in the economy menu can help you choose which specialized industries to place. If you see a material that has a substantial deficit and choose to make more of it, you will make more money overall as you will no longer be importing from the outside connections. Grain is required for a lot of the production chains, including all four office goods as they all require software, 
which through the production chain requires grain. If you want to dabble in balancing the production chain, it's a good idea to keep an eye on this page anyways, but worth getting a head start on grain and making note of where your farmland resources are to plan for more grain buildings in the future. That said, if you don't want to fuss around with balancing these surpluses and deficits perfectly, don't let smarmy YouTubers tell you you're not doing enough with the intricate parts of the game. While 33 Things I Wish I Knew makes for a better title, I have a bonus tip for you as well. Hopefully with this, you'll subscribe to the channel knowing that I have an upcoming video with more for fun facts about City Skylines 2. So your bonus tip, the two graphics options I've found to have the most effect on my GPU usage and FPS are disabling fog quality settings and lowering level of detail as much as you're willing to. I do play with depth of field and motion blur disabled as well, but those went off immediately for personal preference.